welcome in this video lecture i am going to talk about how we can solve the dynamic lot sizing problem using silver mead heuristic so what is the dynamic lot sizing problem let's say if we have a planning horizon of three time period which is time period one okay and time period two and time period three and each time period we have a certain demand so against the time period one we have d1 against the time period two we have d2 and d3 so our objective according to the dynamic lot sizing problem is that in every particular time we have to meet that demand so that means there is no back order are allowed so capacity restriction is not there so which means we can produce as much as possible or we can order as much as possible so how we can meet uh, this particular demand is so either we can meet this demand with the help of the already inventory we have which means the inventory we have in the last time period left plus the quantity which we are producing in this particular time period okay so with the help of this one we can meet the demand of this particular time period and our objective is that we should be able to minimize the total cost and what kind of cost that is ordering cost as well as the holding cost if i'm talking about in terms of the supply chain or the inventory context but if i'm talking about in the context of the planning production planning or the lot sizing perspective in production environment then the ordering cost is actually the setup cost and the holding cost we have which is the inventory holding cost so in a silver meal heuristic how we can solve this particular problem so basically in a silver, a silver meal heuristic we are trying to find out the total cost per period so how we can calculate the total cost or total inventory cost per period that is basically the ordering cost plus the total holding cost so this is per unit holding cost and this is the average inventory uh, cost okay so basic, basically this is the average inventory so what does this mean mean how we can find out this one so if i'm again considering this one the time horizon so let's say against the time one we have d1 we have d2 and d3 right so we have the planning horizon 3 and i want to find out this uh, mathematical expression what does that basically mean is that means we are saying that let's say this is january this is february and this is march okay so what uh how much inventory we have at the start of the january if the planning horizon is three which means i am saying that if i am going to place the order in the start of the january and to meet the demand of Feb january february and march that means i am going to uh, have the inventory of d1 plus d2 and plus d3 right so that means uh, we have d1 plus d2 plus d3 the amount of inventory we have at the start of the january okay plus so as uh, the january ends so which means we reach towards the start of the february the left inventory we have that is equal to d2 plus d3 and that would be the average value okay so basically the two is going to be the constant which is the average number plus so similarly if we have at the start of the february so the starting inventory is d2 plus d3 okay and then uh, as i am reaching towards the uh, demand three so we have only d3 okay and divided by two right so again plus we have at the start of uh, d third month which is the march which is d3 by 2 so basically this uh, mathematical expression can be written this way how we can write down this one if you can see that the d1 is occurring in this entire series is one time okay so d2 is occurring in this uh, series is three times right so this is three and then d3 is occurring in this entire series is five times so similarly if i have the planning horizon four so the next number which means d4 is going to be occur seven times 
Similarly, if we have the planning horizon 5, then the D5 is going to be occur 9 times and so on. So this is uh, the series we have. So this series can be written as 2T minus 1. Okay, so if I am going to place um, 1 in T, I am going to this one. If I am going to place 2 over here, I am going to get 3. If I am going to place 3 and then I am going to get 5. Okay, because we are getting the sum, so that's why we are doing sum from T is equal to 1 to capital T. So I, so in order to get the average demand, so multiply by the demand of that time period divided by 2. So I hope you got the idea how we are going to find out the average inventory of the period. Okay, so this is basically the ordering cost. This is going to be the uh, total inventory cost we have in order to find out the per period cost okay so how we can do that that is going to be the total cost divided by the total time so the, depending upon how much planning horizon we have okay so uh, now the next question is how much we are going to order that means that is depending upon we are going to compare the time horizon t and the time horizon t minus 1 period okay so the total inventory cost is going to be the uh, t minus 1 equal to up to t minus 1 the sum of the demand so let's consider an example where you will get the clear idea so first of all uh, using the silver meal i am performing the first iteration and in a first iteration i am doing the first uh you can say 1.1 iteration so i'm considering only one period as a planning horizon which means january so that means right now our concern is to meet the demand of january okay so the ordering cost is going to be 80 because we are going to place the order at the start of the january the carrying cost is going to be because the planning horizon is one so the per unit uh, carrying cost that was given as per the problem which is 1.75 dollar Okay, this was also given, right? Because our planning horizon is 1, so T is equal to 1. So 2 minus 1, this is going to be 1 by 2 multiplied by the demand in the first period, which is 36. So this is the $31.5. <clears throat> okay, so ordering cost plus carrying cost is going to be the total cost. So per period cost is going to be the total cost divided by the total number of periods. So because we have the 1, period planning horizon that's for one so the per period cost is uh, 111.5 <coughs> now let's uh, calculate uh, the total uh, per period cost if we have the planning horizon 2 so what does that mean that mean at the start of the january we are going to place the order of january plus february's demand okay so that mean uh, the ordering cost is going to be 80 dollar but the average, the carrying cost is going to be 1.75 because the planning horizon is 2. So this is for the first month. This is for the second month. Again, we are using this one. So that is going to be 189. The total cost is this one. And per period cost is going to be the total cost divided by 2 is 134. Okay. So if we are going to compare that, if we are considering the planning horizon equal to 1, and planning horizon equal to 2 so what is the per period cost smaller per period cost which is 111 so that is indicating that in order to meet the demand of january we should order at the start of the january so we cannot place the order enough that we should uh, at the start of the january that we should also be able to meet the demand of february so that means uh, after the first iteration completion because when we are considering the order horizon 2, the total per period cost is start increasing. So the after the first iteration, we conclude that we should order at the start of the January equal to the demand of the January, which is 36. Okay. Now we are going to perform the iteration number two. So according to Silver Meal, again, so we already met the demand of the January. Now Again, I am considering the planning horizon equal to 1, which is only we need to meet the demand of the February. So the ordering cost is 80. The carrying cost is 52.5 using the same particular formula because the order horizon is 1. That is only the February. 
So this is the total cost we have that is order cost plus the carrying cost. Again, we have the planning horizon one that is equal to only the February. So the per period cost is going to be 132.5 divided by one. So this is the per period cost. Now uh, we need to check against the order horizon two. So against the order horizon two, which means at the start of the February, we are going to meet the demand of February and March. So that means I am going to place the order equal to the demand of February as well as the March. So which is 145. So the ordering cost is 80. So the carrying cost again using the same particular formula we are calculating, which is 275.63. So this is the total cost. Uh, this is the per period cost because the number of period is two. This is the per period cost again If we can see that if we are considering the planning horizon two, the per period cost is starting increasing. So we got the The scene at the end of the iteration two. that in order to meet the demand of February So we should order at the start of February equal to the demand of the February so till now we have solved the problem till February so that means we are going to place the order at the start of the January equal to 36 We are going to place the order equal to 60. That is the demand of the February now iteration 3 Again, uh, the first part we are only considering the first month planning horizon Okay, so against that what would be the per period cost? This is the ordering cost. This is the carrying cost This is the total cost and divided by one we are going to get the per period cost Okay, now we are considering the two months planning horizon. Okay, that is basically the March as well as the April. So the ordering cost, this is going to be the carrying cost, this is the total cost. So this is going to be divided by two. So we are going, uh, we are getting 91.63. So if you can see when we have the planning horizon one, the per period cost is going to be this one. If we have the planning horizon two, the per period cost is 91.63 which is smaller that mean we have to check now planning horizon three against what would be the per period cost. So now I am considering the third part of the iteration three, which mean I am checking the three month planning horizon. Okay, so which mean at the start of the March, I am going to place the order equal to the sum of March, April and May demand. So the ordering cost is 80. Okay, against the three months planning horizon, the total carrying cost is equal to this one. So ordering cost plus carrying cost is equal to 353.875. So because the planning horizon was three, so the total cost divided by three is going to be this one. So is, if you can see, if I am going to place the order at the start of the March in order to meet the demand of all three, that is not good. Okay, the total cost is higher. Okay, but if I am going to place the order at the start of the March in order to meet the demand of only March and April, that is 91, which is smaller than this one. And this is uh, basically in order to meet the demand of March, April, and May. Okay, so that means we got the conclusion that, uh, so this was only for the March. Okay, uh, so which means, so in order to meet the demand of March and April, if I'm going to place the order, so that would be more benefit for me. Okay, and that is more beneficial because the total cost is much smaller. Okay, against the others. Okay, so that means uh, till now we have solved the problem till Ma April because till now what we have got the decision that in order to meet the demand of January, we should order at the start of the January equal to 36. And uh, in order to meet the demand of February, we should order 60 at the start of the February. And then in the iteration three, we found that uh, at the start of the March, we should place the order equal to the, the demand of March and April to meet the demand of March and April. Now we are talking about from the May, which is the iteration four. Again, I am considering planning horizon one, and this is the per period cost if I am considering the planning horizon one. And then I am considering the planning horizon two. So this is going to be the two planning horizon, and the per period cost is this one. So again, uh, when we are considering the planning horizon one, the 
per period cost is smaller so that means in order to meet the demand of may we should place the order at the start of may right <clears throat> similarly in order to place meet the demand of june we should place the order at the start of the june right and this is going to be total cost so this is the summary of the solution so the summary saying that uh, in order to meet the demand of the january we should place the order of 36 and this is going to be the total cost uh, in order to meet the demand of february we should place the order at the start of the february this is going to be the inventory cost in order to meet the demand of uh, march and april we should place the order at the start of the march which is equal to the sum of march and april's demand according to silver mill heuristic but in order to meet the demand of may we should place the order at the start of the may in order to meet the demand of june we should place the order equal to uh, 75 and this is the total cost we are going to uh, have um, according to the silver meal heuristic i hope you got the idea how we can uh, solve the dynamic lot sizing problem using silver meal heuristic so thank you so much See you in the next lecture.